but Quentrell, we like to change the tasting menu a lot. It could be because we have something new that's come in, or it could just be because of what the inspiration happens to be that day. This tasting menu, if I reflect on it, seems to be pretty heavily nostalgic from my life, and I feel like a lot of our tasting menus kind of fall suit with that. So for the first dish, I did an oyster dish, and I wanted to invoke the feelings that you have when you go to the beach in Oregon in the wintertime. It is rainy, and the waves are big, and it is misty. I like to kind of recreate this beach scene where I have like seaweed and mussels, or or whatever you're gonna find at the Oregon coast. I shuck a couple oysters and I dress them with some nok cham, a little bit of fermented chili, and some finger lime. And then I create like a tea with some kombu and some seaweed again, and a little bit of salt. And then we pour that over dry ice that sits underneath the shells and it creates this mist that you're gonna get kind of at the beach. We're super hyper local, so everything's coming from within, you know, within probably 50 miles, a little more in some cases. But for the most part, these guys are changing what they have available on a weekly basis, if not like every other couple of weeks. So what that does for me is it kind of keeps everything fresh, is a good way to describe it. Our second dish, I call it first whiteout, and it has to do with that time of year where it's getting cold and I love when it snows. So this dish is meant to recreate your first snowfall. We're gonna take things that we have available at the farmer's market right now, so I have lovely parsnips. I like to smoke it, because it gives it a really nice, deep umami flavor. And I use that to hold one of our local farm fresh poached eggs. Now that I have like a nice fatty base, I'm gonna create a bunch of like really fresh ingredients on top. So I have daikon radish and Asian pear, and I dress them with yuzu and a little bit of hazelnut oil. And then I have baby vegetables that I'm gonna have the greens on still, so it looks like it's kind of sprouting out of the ground that has been covered in snow. So for the snow, I take heavy whipping cream and whip it until it's about broken. And right before it breaks, I add a little bit of sour cream and a bunch of fresh wasabi, and I season it, and then we freeze it and mix it up in the Roboku, and it creates a super light snow. It's just like powder. This is invoking something that is meant to be like an exciting time of the year. It's an exciting time of the year for me. There's snow coming, you get to ski, you get to get outside, you get to adventure outdoors in the wintertime. It's part of the reason I live in Oregon is so I can do these things. I will say I do sometimes get things that are from the East Coast because sometimes ingredients are only from where they're from. It happens to be the very beginning of the day boat main scallop season and to me they are as good as they can possibly be. So I kind of cut it into a, like a noodle shape and I dress it with some charred scallions and some charred chilies and sesame oil and sesame seeds. And then I have this EXO oil that I put on it and I have Meyer lemon, which is also in season for us right now. And that's about it. And then I lightly smoke it and that gives it a little bit of depth and a little bit more umami as well. And that smoke goes so well with that sweet scallop. If you were to smoke a scallop heavily, it might overpower it. This little bit of nuanced smoke at the end is pretty perfect for a nice, nuanced, balanced dish. Uh, this next dish is called Orange and Yellow, and it's inspired from a painting by Mark Rothko. It's orange and yellow, and they kind of meld into each other. So we start the dish with some sustainably caught hamachi, which I dress in nak cham and olive oil, just a little bit of lemon juice, a little bit of Peruvian corn, which is really nice and crunchy. And then we're just gonna kind of add things that are gonna layer nicely. So I have some pickled radish, which I have stained orange with a little bit of turmeric and the natural red from their skins. Some pickled cauliflower, which is also done with a little bit of turmeric. And then I have these really gorgeous amaranth leaves, some marigold a little bit of sam jang, which is a miso-based paste, which adds a little bit of umami and also adds a little bit of fat into a dish that is otherwise fat-free at this moment, so it adds a nice luxurious element to it. The last thing I do to give it one last big pop of orange is I have this tangerine agua chile, which adds spice, and I like to take the agua chile and I steep some bonito flakes in it, and it gives us this really smoky, fishy flavor, which is a really interesting nuance. I've been doing a lot of Peruvian food lately. I think it's really fun, and I really like to kind of mix in the Japanese flavors into the Peruvian cuisine. It's Nikkei food, and I feel like it's pretty underrepresented at the moment, and it's really tasty and really bright. Now that it's winter months, it's cold, this last dish, this is a really comforting dish. We start off with a fresh roll pasta, and we fill it with a puree of katsu kabocha squash, a little bit of ricotta cheese, and then an egg yolk. So the ravioli is gonna cook for about three minutes. That's a perfect amount of time to make it so you don't have, the pasta's not al dente anymore, but it hasn't overcooked the yolk in the inside, because inevitably you want that yolk to you know, spill out and mix with the brown butter and create this lovely sauce. I like to brown butter in a pan and I throw some rosemary in there last second, and as soon as the three minute timer goes off, I take the ravioli, put it in the pan with the butter, and it kind of like crackles and pops, and I just baste it a couple times and put it right on the plate, and then pour the butter right on top of it. I just cover it in Parmesan and truffle, and out it goes. And a lot of times I make a lot of dishes that have like lots of elements and lots of pretty things and lots of flowers and lots of this and lots of this. But then it's also nice to be able to take a, a dish and have it have two things on it and have it be completely delightful. So this is a situation where a really small amount goes a really long way.
I've just kind of taken you through kind of a basic rendition of what our tasting menu may be like any given day of the week at Crenshaw. However, what I feel like is really lovely about this restaurant is that we are constantly trying to push the envelope and trying to do new dishes and trying to do new things. And it's really to push ourselves as chefs and as human beings and to keep it fresh, as I was saying. Like, I really want the people who are working in this restaurant to like what they're doing because inevitably, if, if they're inspired and they're enjoying what they're doing, then they're going to pour their heart into it as well because they see me pouring my heart into it.